So a subscriber reached out to me and asked if I could make a quick little video on like the importance of like a deinterlacing video. And specifically, you mentioned that the, there's a show from the late 90s called The Magnificent Seven that it was deinterlaced and he wanted to see what I could do with it. First of all, I'm going to go over uh, why it's important to deinterlace your video if it is interlaced, how to identify video that is interlaced, and uh, you know, go in different ways to deinterlace your video. I'm going to go ahead and open Topaz, you know, bring in the video. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to show you what, if I just like bring in raw video that's de that's interlaced and I just, so I'm going to show you what it looks like. So I'm going to hit the little preview button here and I'll kind of point out, so I'm going to go, you're looking for these little, see this here, these little comb, when you deinterlace video it's going to remove all this stuff. And if you don't do it, you're just going to end up with like video that looks sort of like this on the edges. I mean, it, you know, this looks kind of okay. So this is definitely what you're uh, we're trying to avoid. So you definitely want to deinterlace this video before processing it. Now, recently Topaz uh, introduced some some cool new uh, models that can deinterlace your video while and upscale at the same time. So I'm going to show you one of these. I'm going to go with the own TV. Uh, you can try any of these. See, as you can see, it kind of shows you what it does in the preview. You can see the boy's face. There's like combing on the left side, and on the right, it's perfectly smooth. So I'm going to try DT. Um, you can again try any of these. I'm going to put it on DT. Uh, set it to HD. I kind of been taking off the grain recently, but you can leave the grain on if you want. If you want the cleanest image possible, you can turn off the green. It's up to you. Um, so I'm gonna like preview the same spot. Look at the. Let's just once it's done processing, I'll pause it. Here I kind of go through. There's the. There's you can see the left side is deinterlaced. This side it looks much better. Um, it actually does a really good job. If you're going to use this, I mean, this might be a quick little, like, I want to do a quick little clip and just do it quickly and not have to, like, process it, like, through, like, a handbrake or hybrid beforehand. That's something you can do, and, you know, it actually gives you a really good result. But, you know, you, I personally like these Artemis ones, and now the Topaz came up with this, these new Proteus 6-parameter um, models, which are kind of cool. It actually, you hit this button, and it kind of, like, auto-detects, like, the best settings. That's a whole different video. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to identify uh, what uh, deinterlaced video looks like. I kind of like to see, I like to use like a program like VLC and you can go to tools and codec information and as you can see here it's um, it'll say here 60 Hertz. You know, obviously it says 29797 that's after but you know well, if it's interlaced, you're going to see the 60 hertz thing here. I'll show you a non-interlaced video so you can see the difference. Okay, well, here's another video. I'm going to just pause it right there. And you hit codec information, there's no 60 hertz, so this is a progressive DVD. I, after, I think most DVDs became progressive after a while. It's hard, um, they usually are. So this is the thing, you can either, like I said earlier, you can use these Dion like models and those are deemed to lace your video if you just want to do it quickly unless you use this and just set it at 100% which basically just deinterlaces it and doesn't upscale if you want to actually use these uh, models if you do this model and then it's going to just it's going to smooth it out and then if you try to do you know run artemis afterwards with to the same file it's it could be overdone sometimes it looks unnatural and like plasticky I, what I've noticed more recently is you kind of you, you only want to do the upscale once. Sometimes you can go twice if you do like light. You may, maybe go like this high quality for the first pass and maybe medium or low for the second to try to extract a little more. It depends. You you know it could if you overdo it you might it might look weird and like like a Ken doll or Barbie doll or something. It's just too it's too smoothed out. So I'm going to open up a handbrake here and show you how I would. So I'm going to just take this same file here. I have like a deinterlace preset, but I'll just show you what I would do. If you want to actually, I typically like deinterlacing beforehand, 
and then and then processing with one of these Artemis ones or even this new Proteus um, model. So you go in here and hit uh, Detelacine and hit Default, and the interlace is I so I just leave a decomb to uh, I'll set this to 23.9.976, and I'll just do like a 4500 average bit rate. I kind of like to I like to actually state how much bit rate I want as opposed to using this these numbers. I feel like it's kind of it's like hit or miss. You, you, you know, you hit 20 and it just becomes you know or 18 and it's like huge, but or you or it's too small. So I kind of want to make sure that I get a certain bit rate. So I'll go to medium. Medium is probably okay because I'm doing two passes. And audio, I'll just do uh, AC3 pass through. I'll get rid of the subtitle and then start encode. Okay, so the file uh, finished in handbrakes, and now it's the ID. It's the interlaced. So I'm going to bring the completed file over into Topaz, and now you're going to be able to use any. You're going to have a file that's the same resolution, but it's already de interlaced. So you can just use the Artemis ones, or you can use a Proteus or whatever, without having to go through the Dion ones. But obviously you can still just go straight to these and you know, you'll get really good results. It's not necessary to de interlace first anymore uh, with Topaz. So I'm gonna find a good good comparisons, a good scene to kind of like do a side-by-side -side view. Yeah, let's check out this one. So let's, let's do a little, let's go a little more aggressive and go to like uh, Artemis low quality. And let's go back to that. Okay, here we go. It's processing, so let's pause there. You can kind of make out a little bit of, you know, some pattern here, more patterns, I don't know, I think that's what they're called. But it's set, it's significantly, uh, the quality is definitely much better. I'm gonna zoom out a little, go to 50 here. It, but it might be a little too much. But again, look, uh, I'm gonna go through the frames and you're gonna see that on either side, you don't see any of the combing effects. So this is the original side. There's no more of the combing. Here, I'm gonna zoom in again. You can't see any combing, and if there is, it's minor. That's not a big deal. And you can definitely see that there's an improvement. I'm gonna go out and I'll just go ahead and I'm gonna try this uh, medium quality and do the same scene again and see what it looks like. Again, you just sometimes you just gotta play with it. You know, I still think it looks a little unnatural to me. So sometimes it's just better to go a little conservative and kind of keep a little more, a little extra of that green. It makes it little, look a little more natural. I mean, I think in, you know, out of the three, I would probably go with the high quality for this one. It gives you enough improvement. I think it looks way better. Again, you can try out these now I'm kind of deviating from this uh, the topic of in de interlacing, but you can go in here and kind of like hit the auto button, or you can actually just play with the sli uh, sliders and you hit re you know dramatically reduce noise if you want. Here, let's let's bring that up a bit. So this one might look pretty good too. So again. Um, I hope this shows you that interlacing is very, uh, very important. Now with Topaz, you don't have to even do de-interlacing anymore. You can just run your your file straight from wherever you get it from and use again these Dion or Dion uh, models here. Another good de-interlacing uh, tool is this program called Hybrid. A lot of people swear by it. It's a little too complicated for my uh, for me. I mean, I, I've used it in the past, and I've it, there's just a lot for the for the for the per person that's casually trying to like make their videos look better. There's a lot of different things you can do. It's probably a more powerful tool, and if you learn to use it and look, you know, go through forums and you know just search on the internet how to use it, it's probably gonna you're probably gonna yield you a better de interlace at the, in the long run. But for most people, I, w I would still kind of recommend going through the hand handbrake route. That's kind of like how I do it because I've tried the, the hybrid one and there might have been like a almost negligible benefit. People may disagree with me, but I kind of like the simplicity of just going in and just, you know, having a, a custom preset and just, just doing it that way. And, and again, like I said, go in here, get the Dion's and you're done and you're good to go.
Well, anyway, I hope you, uh, you found this informative and helpful. And, uh, you know, if you have any other questions about Topaz or Tie and Break or whatever, I kind of use these programs all the time. Leave them in the comments and I'll try to address them as quickly as I can. And uh, please, if you can, like and subscribe. That would be awesome. And it kind of gives me an, an indicator if you like the content. And I'll see you in the next one.